I'm back. Road Trance for the Matrix and Road Show. We're going to talk about some startling revelations coming out of Rolling Stone by way of Vanity Fair because it seems the DA out in Santa Fe is trying to possibly make a bit of a name for uh, his or herself. Uh, but we have a situation here where they might actually be backing Alec Baldwin's claims. Because evidently, they literally ran an experiment involving a gun and was able to replicate the things that Alec Baldwin has been saying. Very interesting here. Um, kind of shocking. Kind of shocking that this is coming out like this. DA's informal experiment could corroborate Alec Baldwin's claim that he didn't pull the trigger on the rush shooting. Really odd. An informal experiment conducted by the top prosecutor now weighing possible criminal charges in the deadly rush shooting reportedly found that Alec Baldwin's claim he didn't pull the trigger isn't as far-fetched as it might sound. Santa Fe District Attorney Mary D.A. Carmack told Vanity Fair in a new interview published Friday that she requested the unofficial test inside her office after Baldwin claimed on the interview, that ABC interview, that cringy one with the music, that his finger wasn't even on the trigger of the antique Colt 45 revolver when it fired the shot that killed cinematographer Elena Hutchins. It, the incident occurred on a New Mexico set of the indie western movie. Baldwin said he simply pulled the revolver's hammer back without fully cocking the gun as part of an exercise purportedly directed by Hutchins so she could work, work out a close-up of the shot of the moving barrel and that the weapon fired when he released the hammer. Uh, the DA said her initial reaction to Baldwin's claim was, oh, that's crazy. Then she decided to dig a little deeper, even though... The formal examination of the Rush revolver is in the hands of the FBI. Quote, one of the investigators in my office happens to have a very old type revolver. So he brought it in at my request so that he could look at it and see if it was possible at all. She said the group cleared a room in her office, made the weapon, made sure the weapon was empty and attempted to reenact Baldwin's actions leading up to the deadly shooting. They visually showed me you can pull the hammer back without actually pulling the trigger and without actually locking it. So you could pull it back part ways. It doesn't lock. And then you let it go. The firing pin can hit the primer of the bullet. The criminal investigation into the shooting remains ongoing. Hutchins husband, meanwhile, filed a wrongful debt lawsuit Tuesday against Russ producers. Baldwin assistant director, David Hall's, Rookie Armorer, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, Prop Master Sarah Zachary, and the set's Armorer mentor, Seth Kennedy. Baldwin's lawyer, Aaron Dyer, released a statement saying any claim that Alec, Ball Alec Baldwin was reckless is entirely false. In a separate lawsuit, Ger Gutierrez-Reed alleges that Kennedy and his company, PDQ Arm and Prop, deceptively sold boxes of ammunition labeled 45 Colt dummies that in truth contained a deadly mix of both live and dummy ammunition. And of course he's denying raw doing actors should be able to rely on armors and prop department professionals at, as well as assistant directors, rather than deciding on their own when a gun gun is safe to use Baldwin's attorney said in the statement. Well, Here's the problem Baldwin's got, and I said it before, I'll say it again. His major problem is he's a producer on this movie. Yeah, you were physically involved at the time of the shooting, but you're the producer with an umbrella over everything that goes on on the film. And uh, I did a video, I believe it was yesterday, where somebody literally came out that was on the set and had sent a text message and it's a pretty damning text message that claimed this set, this movie set of Rust, 
It's super unsafe. Well, that's that's damning because of Alec Baldwin's responsibility to everybody involved in the film because of him being a producer on the film. Um, it is interesting that the DA is saying that she replicated this uh, potential experiment. I don't know what she doesn't say that it was a Colt 45 revolver. Uh, I think that would be very important in this, that you would do these experiments. I would think you would have to do it many, many, many multiple times to be able to discount and replicate what, uh, to discount the uh, the actions by Alec Baldwin. I, I really think you would have to do it many, many multiple times before you could rule out but then you got the issue, and it is going to be interesting to see how it plays out involving live ammunition. I don't know how that happened. I think you're going to have several responsible parties that end up coming out of this situation, and they're going to be in a real bind. That's my belief. Uh, because, yeah, the armor, in part, does have some responsibility, I would think. Um I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out. Uh, Alec Baldwin looks terrible in the situation because he has played the role of victim. No, man, you can't do that. That's repugnant behavior. You cannot. When somebody else died, you can't play the role of victim when you literally had your hand on the gun. It's a horrible look. I've thrown him under the bus over that ABC interview. It was terrible, that background music. I mean, the lack of self-awareness for them to create a production out of that. I mean, um, the other thing that, that we haven't talked about is the fact that he is an actor. Okay? He is an actor. He can literally, uh, you know, manipulate facial expressions, turn on the tears, uh, all of this sort of thing that's going gonna, gonna to play a role. And we're not, we're not going to know what's truthful and not truthful, potentially. Tell me what you think, Matrix and Rhodes fans. Make sure you hit subscribe. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. <laughs>